A Bruins-Rangers rivalry really should be a thing again, and while it could heat up tonight in a regular season meeting, the surefire way to get things going would be in the Eastern Conference Championship. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Thursday, March 21st, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine. The podcast is available on your favorite podcast app, as well as on YouTube. Please do hit that subscribe button so that each new episode is automatically added to your feeds for you to download, listen, and enjoy every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app. Create an account and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Again, my name is Ian McLaren. I'm a lifelong Bruins fan. Been covering this team for various outlets for 20 years, covering the NHL for 10 years professionally, and uh, excited for another game between the New York Rangers and the Boston Bruins tonight. I've long held that this should be one of the NHL's big rivalries. You see Boston, New York rivals in baseball, football, basketball. It's kind of not been the case as much in hockey. And we'll get into that more here in a moment. First, quick reminder, you can find the podcast on social media at locked NHL Bruins, and you can find me, my hockey thoughts and dad jokes at Ian C. McLaren. Now, the Boston Bruins and the New York Rangers will meet tonight, and it's the final meeting in the regular season between these two teams. Uh, They could meet again in the playoffs, but it would not be until the final round, or the final round in the Eastern Conference. Now, this, of course, is the NHL's extension of the Boston-New York rivalry, which is very much present in baseball, certainly football, Jets, Patriots, Celtics, Knicks in basketball as well. But the peak of this rivalry rivalry was really back in the 1970s, uh, where they met uh, many times between 1970 and 1973 in the postseason. Uh, Back in the day, very few teams. The Bruins beat the Rangers in 1970 en route to a Stanley Cup win over the Blues that season. Then they made it to the Stanley Cup Finals in 1972, but lost to the Rangers in a six-game series in the Stanley Cup Final. Then they lost the following year, 1973, in the opening round. They did not play again until uh, 2013. In the postseason, they had a bunch of series back in the 20s. Boston beat the Rangers in the 1929 Stanley Cup final. Uh, They lost to the Rangers the year prior, but beat them en route to a Stanley Cup final loss to Ottawa in 1927. Ancient, ancient history at this point. Um, In 1939, they beat the Rangers en route to a Stanley Cup final win over the Toronto Maple Leafs. But again, they have not played in the postseason since uh, 2013 when the Bruins won in the second round before sweeping the Pittsburgh Penguins and advancing to the uh, Stanley Cup final that year against the Chicago Blackhawks. That's really where rivalries are solidified, right? Is in the playoffs. You can have, um, you can play a team like a hundred times in the regular season, but until you get that playoff juice, it really doesn't hit, uh, hit the same. And there's not, I don't think there's anybody from 
2013. That is still on the New York Rangers. Brad Marchand, of course, the only holdover there on the Bruins side of things. Uh, the rivalry kind of hit a weird bump in, what was it, 2018 or 19 when the Bruins traded for Rick Nash from the New York Rangers, sending, uh, what, a first-round pick and Ryan Lindgren in exchange. Lindgren has always had a, a seemingly a bit of a chip on his shoulder when playing the Boston Bruins. Uh, he's always mixing it up. Always getting into things. I believe he might be injured at the moment, so he won't be in the lineup uh, tonight. But where the rivalry could really reignite is in the playoffs. Think about great rivalries in recent history. The one that jumps out, of course, is the Colorado Avalanche, and the Detroit Red Wings, some epic series there. Uh, the Penguins Capitals had the series several years ago um boston montreal had a bunch of playoff showdowns earlier this century and of course in 2011 uh, en route to the um stanley cup uh win there uh you think of boston and vancouver boston and st louis more recently if the bruins and Rangers are able to advance to the Eastern Conference Final. I think that would be a great thing for hockey to have two of the biggest, oldest, best markets facing off against one another. That would really reignite this rivalry. And, um, you know, it's a bit of a long shot considering the paths that each team would have to take. But they are two of the top teams in the NHL this season. And they will measure up against themselves tonight in a tilt between these two teams, which we will preview uh, coming up here on the podcast. But again, I think hockey would be well served by a reignition of a Boston, New York rivalry. Most recently it's been the Bruins that have played the Islanders in, in the playoffs. And then you had Zidane Chara going back over there. Um, and really, the Islanders are kind of uh, a secondary team in New York to the Rangers, and it's the Rangers that we would want the Bruins to uh, to face in order to reignite that great rivalry. When you think about it at the moment, there's not super hot rivalry. I guess it would be Toronto as Boston's hottest rival at the moment in terms of recent history um and that's a big function of divisional alignment a couple of years ago you had boston in that all-american division with the covid restrictions the canadian division boston being in the atlantic the rangers being in the metro that doesn't foster playoff possibilities and i would really really like the NHL to go back to the one to eight format and uh, allow for those Eastern rivalries to develop and not limiting it to one single division where two rounds of the playoffs are contained within those divisions. Um, because it's, it's pretty arbitrary. Boston, New York should be in the same division ideally. Uh, but of course you don't want to take Boston away from Toronto, Montreal, uh, Buffalo, Detroit. So I get it. The way it could be reignited is in the playoffs and there could be a Eastern conference preview, final preview going tonight in Boston, where they will host the Rangers and try to get their first win against the blue shirts. We'll preview that one here as the podcast continues. Now, if you're looking for tickets for tonight's Bruins Rangers game or looking ahead to the Red Sox season, there's no better place to buy tickets than game time. It's a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. They have killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. I love the view from your seat so that you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, 
Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, terms do apply, but create an account, redeem code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Game Time last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much once again for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your daily routine. Free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. And uh, question for you. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Maybe you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-hour, 7-day-a-week sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today, the Boston Bruins are hosting the New York Rangers in the third and final meeting between these two teams this season. The Bruins have come out on the losing end both times uh, failing to um, to beat the Rangers this season. They did lose in overtime. They did pick up a point. And prior to that, they lost 7-4 to the Rangers at Madison Square Garden, a game in which um, Artemi Pernarin, Chris Kreider went off for three points apiece. And Jonathan Quick got the start in that one gave up, you know, four goals and 871 point percentage. Uh, in the second game, I believe it was Igor Shesterkin who was in net and he put together a much finer uh, performance in that one. Uh, let's see, stopping, check the box score here. Uh, 21, 22 shots for a 955 save percentage. I believe it will be Shesterkin in net tonight for the Rangers. Uh, the Bruins, according to Money Puck, have a 55.9% chance of winning. And I believe they will be going with uh, Jeremy Swayman in net tonight as they stick with the um, with the rotation. Uh, just checking the feed from Twitter to check on some lineup notes for tonight. I know Bell Fraser from the Hockey News, who was on the pod recently, saying, per Jim Montgomery, lineup is the same as Tuesday. Mason Lorai, Parker Witherspoon, and James Van Riemsdyk will be out. Kevin Shattenkirk, Andrew Peak will be on the third pairing. It'll be the JB fourth line. Jacob Lauko on the third line. Van Riemsdyk still working his way back from illness, and Jeremy Swayman will get the start. The Rangers, over their past uh, 10 games, I mean, they're one of the best teams in the NHL for a reason. They have gone 6-3-1 uh, and one over their past 10. They are coming off a loss to the Winnipeg Jets. Prior to that, they beat the Islanders and the Penguins, uh, lost to the Lightning, and beat the Hurricanes, Devils, Blues. The Bruins are coming in having won three in a row, four of their past five, five of their past six, and six of their past eight, seven of the past 10, seven, two, and one over the past 10 games. And Jeremy Swayman, 9.17% save percentage. Igor Shesterkin, very good goalie, 9.12 save percentage. Artemi Panarin having an unreal season for the Rangers. He's got 94 points in 69 games ahead of Mr. Prius, Vincent Trocek, 65 points. Chris Kreider at 64. Mika Zibanejad has got 58 points. Alex Lafreniere breaking out with 44 points. And, of course, on the blue line, Adam Fox, always a stud to watch back there. Panarin leads the way with seven points, three goals, four assists over their past five games. Boston countering with a red-hot David Pasternak, who has five goals, eight points over his past five games. Uh, check out. Connor Ryan, friend of the pod, he had a great um, article 
about the bear suit that was thrown on the ice the other night and from whence it came. These two teams are both strong when it comes to special teams. New York's power play ranks sixth. Their penalty kill ranks fifth. Boston's penalty kill is seventh. And their power play is eighth. So Rangers with a... uh, advantage there despite Boston's strong showing. Uh Boston slightly better offensively, 3.34 goals versus 3.33 goals per game for the Rangers, identical um goals allowed per game. They rank 6th and 7th with identical 2.7 marks. The Rangers getting the advantage because they've played fewer games, but you know, you can basically count on it being like a 3-2 game tonight um, if we're feeling the averages here. Uh, Boston should get the advantage because they're at home again. According to Money Puck, they have a 55.9% chance of winning this game. And it should be a doozy. It should be a great one. And hopefully the rivalry here is ignited a little bit in advance of a playoff meeting in the Eastern Conference Finals. And we'll take a look at where these two teams rank in the Eastern Conference power rankings here uh, as the podcast continues. eBay Motors, millions of parts for your ride available right now. If you're looking to level up with superchargers, LED headlights, exhaust kits, or you just need a a new side mirror or a new rear view mirror, windshield wipers. They have everything your car could need with over 122 million parts to choose from. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay guaranteed fit, your part is, wait for it, guaranteed to fit every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. All the parts you need at the prices you can afford. Easy to turn your car into an MVP and bring home a win. Keep your ride alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. And the eBay guaranteed fit is available only to U.S. customers. Let's take a quick look at the Eastern Conference power rankings here as two powerhouses get set to meet in the Rangers and the Bruins tonight at TD Garden. In terms of point percentage, the Bruins rank first at the moment, slightly ahead of the Florida Panthers, although Florida has two games in hand, and let's see if they are playing tonight. The Panthers will be hosting the red-hot Nashville Predators. According to Money Puck, they have a 62% chance of winning, but Do not discount the Florida Panthers in this one as they have been the hottest team in the NHL as of late. Uh, So the Bruins right now, a three-point lead over the Panthers and the Rangers. Uh, Boston, Florida, New York, one, two, three in terms of point percentage as well. Boston ranks third in goal differential at plus 45 behind the Panthers and Hurricanes, who are a team to be reckoned with as well. The Rangers rank fourth at plus 42. These four teams, you know, on paper should be the teams that advance out of the first round. And if the playoffs started right now, you would have the Bruins versus the Red Wings. You would have the Rangers against the Lightning, Florida versus Tampa, and then Carolina versus, oh, sorry, Florida versus Toronto, and then Carolina versus Philadelphia. Carolina should win that one pretty easily. You'd think the Rangers should be able to take care of the Lightning. Uh, Panthers, Maple Leafs, Florida beat them pretty easily last year. Boston, Detroit, again, should be a win for the Bruins, but we all know that once the playoffs begin, anything can happen. But if we're ranking these teams right now, I would say probably Florida, Boston, New York, Carolina, you can all you can put them all in the group of contenders, true contenders in the Eastern Conference. Toronto kind of on the border there. They're really right in between uh Tampa, 
Philly, Detroit uh, on the bottom end of the top eight, Carolina, New York, Florida, Boston, all above 90 points. Toronto's kind of in the middle there, five points back of Carolina with a game in hand, but seven points up on Tampa. They're kind of a, a tweener when it comes to contenders and pretenders in the Eastern Conference. They beat up Washington really good last night. Much to my chagrin, because I have uh, Charlie Lindgren in uh, in fantasy should have sat him last night. That was a really dumb move on my part, but such is life. Um, whoever wins tonight will have the upper hand. Certainly, if the Bruins win, they could put themselves five points clear of the Rangers with one more game played. Couple that with. A Panthers loss and Boston could be pretty securely uh, in first place over on the West. Is there a team that can challenge them for the president's trophy? Vancouver's got 94 points. Winnipeg at 93. Colorado, Dallas all at 93 as well. But Boston right now is first in points, first in point percentage. Seemingly on track to win their second consecutive president's trophy. Will a curse rear its ugly head once again? Well, I don't necessarily believe in curses. Talked about this extensively yesterday. Just get into the playoffs, play your best hockey, see what happens. That's all we can ask for. On tomorrow's show, we will be back to recap whatever happens tonight between these two teams. Uh, we will also preview some weekend action, another game coming up against the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, this one in Philly on Saturday afternoon. Um, and then they'll have a couple days off before two games in Florida next week and a game against the Capitals next Saturday. I hope you're all doing well, friends. Uh, life is hard, am I right? And sometimes it feels heavier than others. That's certainly the case right now. Uh, but this team brings some healthy distraction, and I hope you all enjoy hearing me rant about this team, joining in on the discussion on social media and on YouTube. And I really do appreciate all of you who listen regularly, who watch on YouTube regularly. Uh, it certainly does mean a lot, and um, I thank you for that. Please do take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll talk to you again here tomorrow on Locked On Boston Bruins part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.